NF all set, state at number two. Welcome to another edition of NFO Midwest Farm Report, brought to you by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area. On today's program, National NFO President Oren Lee Staley is interviewed by Vince Stotts, one of the Midwest's leading television and radio farm broadcasters. Well, as all of you folks certainly know, uh, NFO is currently in the news concerning a holding action. And so, therefore, today we thought it might be interesting to uh, take out a few minutes and have a discussion with National NFO President Orrin Lee Staley about the objectives of the NFO, the progress that the organization is making, the uh, holding action, and uh, generally about agriculture. First of all, Mr. Staley, uh, do you feel American agriculture is in trouble? There's no question about this, Vince. The facts bear out the point or the truth of the situation that exists in American agriculture. The farmers are in a very tight cost price squeeze. The price for the products that they've been selling has been continuing to go down for some 12 years. The price for the products that they have to buy in order to produce the products that they sell that feeds the American people have continued to go up. So simply in financial terms it means that the price of everything they have to buy or have to have to sell continues to go down, the price of everything they have to buy has continued to go up, and the cost price squeeze has continued to tighten. Talking about money, Mr. Staley, why do you feel that business and industry profits continue to climb and workers' wages continue to go up while the farmer's income continues to decline? I believe that anyone that will analyze the economics of this nation will soon realize that the reason that farmers are not sharing in the general prosperity of this nation is simply because that they are the only unorganized group in an organized economy. They produce the most essential commodities in America, but they're the only people that go to the marketplace and say, what will you give me? The American farmers under the present marketing structure have no way of putting a price tag on their products. Every other American, whether he has a service or a product to sell, puts a price tag on his product or his service, and he keeps that product until he gets his price. And how does NFO intend to correct this problem? Well, it, of course, must be done under the NFO collective bargaining program. And what steps does uh, the farmer have to take to uh, get a better price? Well, Vince, I believe that if anyone will sincerely study the NFO collective bargaining program, that they will see that this structure is sound. Not only is it sound, but it is a structure that is necessary if farmers are going to get a fair price for their products, which means a fair profit. Now, if farmers are going to price their products and these steps are carried out under the NFO collective bargaining program, first they must organize. This is always the most important step and a continuous step that they must take. It means that they must join together. They must organize for the purpose of pricing their products, the purpose of bargaining and selling their products together in order to price their products. So it means that they must organize, and when they organize, they bring together their production to sell that production together. Today they sell as individuals, and this means that they cut each other's throat at the marketplace. It means that the buyers just wait until the farmers decide to sell. If some decide not to sell today, the buyers know that they will tomorrow. And as long as farmers sell as individuals, they're going to be in this position. The second step that they must take is to bring together enough of the total production, enough of the nation's total agricultural production so that the present volume buyers cannot fulfill their needs from other sources. And then after they have organized and they have brought their production together, then they really decide, they really demonstrate what type of an organization they have built. Because at this point, it's either a collective bargaining group or it's a collective begging group. 
If all the farmers in this nation would go to the marketplace and say, what will you give me? All they've done is formed a collective bagging, bagging group. But if they're going to bargain, they have to put a price tag on their products, just the same as the man that put a price tag on this suit of clothes when I, before I bought it. And so consequently, it means that if the farmers are going to back up their bargaining power, they must put the price tag on their products. They must use holding actions at intervals to demonstrate their bargaining power, to upset the buying pattern of the existing buyers, and to eventually get in the position to simply be able to keep enough of their production together at home until they are in a position that the processors, the buyers of farm commodities must come to them to fulfill their needs, and that means the buyer's needs. This is the establishment of bargaining power. And then fourth, of course, the final and ultimate objective of the NFO is to get contracts with processors that will not only give farmers a fair price for their products, but will also make it possible for farmers to set up a marketing structure that will meet the marketing problems of agriculture, be able to take care of the surpluses that might develop, and really uh, the term surplus is one that should not be used as much as it is because it simply means that if farmers are going to price their products, they must be able to take from normal market channels that production that is not necessarily needed at that particular time from the consuming public and be able to keep it in inventory much in the same manner that industry keeps in inventory the products that they manufacture. But farmers cannot do this as individuals. As individuals, they must do it together. These are the basic steps that the NFO has been working on, at the basic steps of the NFO collect the structure of the NFO collective bargaining program. Mr. Staley, you've told us of some of the steps and some of the actions that NFO and farmers should take. How much progress has NFO made towards its goals? NFO is now organized in some 23 states. This means that we are over the major agricultural producing areas and the adjoining areas. This means that for the first time, the American farmers are within striking distance of being able to price their products. We have brought together by far the largest bargaining group that has ever been brought together in American agriculture. The significance of this is that the structure is sound because for the first time, farmers are organizing to sell all the production that they produce from their farms. No bargaining group in agriculture can be successful unless it is working on all of the major commodities, because if you were just to meet the problems in one commodity, that success will be short-lived. So we now have the most experienced, the best staff, I think, without question, of any bargaining group in America. We have behind us this experience, the growth of the organization, the greatest uh, progress that has ever been made in American agriculture in, in the process of organizing for the purpose of pricing our products. And bringing all this together, it means that we are now in the fourth and final step. And by that I mean processors as a result of our last holding action, as the strength shown in that holding action, are, have been signing master contracts whereby they will pay NFO members a base price that will return them, at least for the first time in a long time, a profit for their production. And so uh, this means that we are making far more progress than has ever been made. And now we are at the point that with this progress that has been made, that some of the largest corporations in America, in America have been recognizing the right of farmers now to price their products. We have been supplying some of these processors. This simply means that we are breaking the buying patterns of the past and that we are demonstrating that farmers can sell together, that we're demonstrating that we are making this progress. And now, building on this, this progress that we have made, we are now in a position with the sup continued support of the farmers to be able to get in striking distance of farmers not only being able to get a fair price for their products, but to set up a surplus disposal program, incentives that will be proper in the marketing of our products so that we can meet the marketing problems of our industry. You know, I think NFO is making tremendous progress in attitudes also. Now, about four or five years ago when I first heard about NFO, uh, an awful lot of farmers, good farmers, big farmers, Influential farmers were against NFO. 
probably because they didn't understand the program. Now, on my travels around the Midwest in uh, broadcasting over the past uh, couple of years, during the past year, and especially the last six months, I've noticed that the attitudes of some of the finest farmers in the communities is changing. Where they were against NFO at one time, up to as recently as six months ago, now either they say, well, maybe this has a lot of possibility, or either they have become members. So I think uh, farmers around the country are finally learning the truth about NFO. They're finding out what it can do, what it is going to do, and therefore, once they all understand it, they will all join NFO just as sure as can be. And therefore, uh, I think you'll agree with me, some of the biggest producers around the country are now joining NFO. Isn't this true? There's no question about this, Vince. And I think the reason for this is that first, those that opposed our efforts, and they opposed our efforts really because they were trying to protect their own positions, they were trying to protect their own profits, but they really make off of farmers by farming the farmers. It really wasn't the opposition that came from farmers themselves. Of course, the farmers wanted to understand what we were trying to do. But it's a misinformation that was passed out by those with selfish interests that had been telling the farmers all these years that this was what they should do. And really, those selfish interests were trying to protect their own interests rather than looking out for the farmers, either a job or profits or whatever it may be. And so they passed out a lot of false propaganda. But uh, the, the real thinking farmers, the businessmen in agriculture, began to sort out the facts from fiction, you might say, Vince. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, what they did as they analyzed the program, as they looked at the structure and they found out that in the NFO, only farmers and producers can be members. They found that the national board of directors or the national president do not have the final decisions on marketing that when they join the NFO, that they keep control of their own destiny because they are free to market as they choose until such time as a contract is consummated with a processor. And the only way a contract can be consummated with a processor is by a two-thirds vote approval of the members attending meetings of which they've been given a 10-day written notice giving date, time, place, and purpose of the meeting. This assures them that they're going to keep control of the organization. And it also assures them that they are going to be free to market as they choose until such time as they're certain they have made their gains, that they know where they're going to market their products, what they're going to get for them. You'll never get the two-thirds vote approval of farmers in any area that are members of the NFO to approve contracts unless they're certain they're going to get an advantage and they know under what marketing conditions they're going to be delivering their products. So I, I, I'm confident, uh, and what you say is quite true, that many of the leading farmers, and this is the one thing that has always been gratifying to us, that really the, the thinking farmers, the businessmen in agriculture, are the ones that are realizing, and more and more of these are continuing to realize, that they must start pricing their products, that there's more to an efficient industry than just producing, that you must also price your products and you cannot live in the past. Uh, Mr. Staley, there's a topic that you mentioned a little bit ago just briefly, that's surpluses. What is NFO going to do about all these surpluses? Well, of course, uh, this is a situation uh, where a lot of misinformation is sometimes passed out. Uh, really, the statistics show, uh, I shouldn't say misinformation, I would say uh, overplaying of the, of the situation. Because really, Vince, as you know, in, in your travels and visiting with some of the top economists in the nation, that there's very, very seldom more than a three or four percent of the total production that is more than can be consumed in any one given year. So this means the percentage is rather small. Now under the contracts, and this is the only way farmers can do it, uh, about letting on the market what they can get a price for and diverting from normal market channels that production that would kill their price and their bargaining power. There's about three steps under the master contracts. First, there's a surplus disposal program set up. Secondly, there's proper incentives on hogs and cattle, for example, to sell at lighter weights would have always been able to adjust if farmers had been pricing their own products, the tonnage in, uh, in, in comparison with the needs. As far as milk is concerned, the incentives could be maybe on a choice veal dairy heifer cares to break the cattle cycle. This could be used on beef cattle. On grain, it means setting up a storage program. These provisions are taken care of. 
in the NFO collective bargaining program. And the fact that we're working on all commodities, bringing them up in relative balance, is very essential to any program of bargaining in agriculture. And this is the reason the structure of NFO has been carefully designed to meet these problems. And what it means, first, farmers in sufficient numbers must make up their minds and what they're doing to control their own destiny and meet their problems as businessmen and women. Mr. Staley, why is there a current need for a holding action? Well, there are several reasons. One, of course, is that if an organization is really acting in a responsible manner, if an organization that is fighting for a fair price for farmers is really fulfilling its responsibility, it's going to give farmers the opportunity to win the battle at the marketplace. In other words, it's going to give the farmers the opportunity through that organization, and this is the NFO, to bring their bargaining power to the marketplace, make it felt, and then get in a position to price their products as a result of this bargaining power. And because of the fact that American farmers have been taking a terrific punishment at the marketplace, it's the NFO's genuine feeling that the American farmers should have the opportunity to make their bargaining power felt and also to make their, their pricing structure become a reality under the NFO. Now, of course, this means simply that the decision really rests in the farmer's hands. Why do I say this? Simply because that any time that the farmers decide to close their lot gates, any time that the farmers decide to keep their production on the farm and price it, they're going to get their price because I would just ask one question to those that would dispute this thought. One question and one question only. What else is there to eat besides food? The American farmers produce the most essential commodity in America. And the only reason they are not getting a fair price for their product and their products is simply because they've been going to the marketplace as individuals saying, what will you give me? In a holding action, they have the opportunity to say, this is our production, we own it first just as the man that sold me this suit of clothes. And after they have reached this point that the buyers must come to them in order to meet their needs, and that's the buyer's needs, once they have to come to them, then they must, of course, reach for their final objective, and that is to get sufficient contracts signed so they not only talk about reaching an immediate objective, and the objective in a holding action is not just to raise the price. This is far from our objective. The objectives of a holding action are simply to bring enough pressure on the processors to reduce the production that is available to the buyers so that they must come to those farmers that are going to sell in a group, all or none, and then meet their terms of a contract whereby they will not be talking about selling their production just today or tomorrow, but from now on, under a contract, a contract that will meet the problems of the industry, that will allow farmers to put a price tag on their products. How long do you think a holding action would have to last to be effective? Well, Vince, this again depends upon how many farmers have had enough punishment at the marketplace. Uh, the facts and the figures are available. First, you have about a 10-day total supply of liquids and solids. As far as meat is concerned, you have about usually a six to seven day supply in storage. Now, farmers' bargaining power can be felt even much quicker than this because of the fact that once you cut off the supply, and by that I mean keep it on the farm, and very little is leaving the farm, it means that it takes you about so long to get it back in the normal market channels. Now, we have never said that farmers should, when they enter a holding action, should say that it's going to take this long or that long. They should enter it with the determination that they're going to hold whatever length of time is necessary. And for this reason, the holding action, the length of our holding actions have steadily increased till the last holding action was some uh, 30 days. Now this means that because of this, uh, that we have been showing the strength of the organization and we were able as a result of that strength to start signing contracts with processors. We have many contracts signed in, uh, with, on many of the various commodities, and it means simply that now we have to get enough contracts, uh, additional contracts signed 
so that we can activate those contracts, then you activate them when you become the dominating factor in the market. It simply means that at that point, the contracts are activated, the NFO members start receiving the base prices of 22.75 on hogs, or 32.45 on cattle, choice cattle, 605 base price on grade A class one milk, five dollars manufactured, a dollar 49 on corn, or at least 275 on soybeans. So it simply means that we are now in the position of using the holding action to finish up the job that we're well along uh, of accomplishing our objective on. Uh, you just mentioned several commodities there, that uh, the prices for them. Uh, what uh, do you, strategy do you use in choosing commodities for an action? Well, there's uh, quite a little thinking, not quite a little. There's, uh, there's a lot of versatility in making the decisions. Uh, there are really three basic choices. You can have a milk action only, you can have a meat action only, or you can have a meat action, which means that you're advising our members to hold for the prices uh, that I have mentioned here, that we're advising our members, suggesting that non-members join the NFO and support our efforts. Now, our choice, of course, is to the, the one that I haven't mentioned, is that you start on a meat action, you see if the farmers are really ready to shut down this agricultural plant, keep their production on the farm, and if they're ready at this point, you can make the decision to include milk at the opportune time and to give you the psychological boost uh, and uh, close the door on the whole bargaining front. You know, it's often said that those who sell during a holding action will get a price and benefit. What do you say to them? Well, Vince, I have to be very direct on this point. I've heard farmers that have said, well, I, may, I got more because I sold. You know, really, Vince, what has happened in this situation? All they have done is sold at the expense of farmers, their neighbors in many cases, that are making an effort to meet the business problems of this agricultural industry. Those prices would never have been there if it had not been for the effort of farmers that were trying to meet the problems of the agricultural industry. So what they have really done is to sold, sold out their neighbors, really, uh, that are making the effort. And they have sold them out many times not realizing that this was the situation. They have sold them out because someone came out and said, you can get this much and you should sell. And what happens, Vince, in a situation like this is that they're thinking about selling one load of cattle or one load of hogs. And then they're forgetting that what they're doing is really buying for the future the low prices that they're going to get. Before the last holding action, Vince, we told the farmers, we told them very specifically in as clear terms as we knew how, that we were having a holding action for the purpose of offering them the opportunity to prevent future price drops. What happened? Not enough of them held. Those that sold, that thought they were getting a little advantage, they asked for and they received the prices they received months later. And so it simply means that farmers must forget about thinking about just a situation where they're going to get an extra dollar they many, many times missed the wrong day in the past, sold the wrong day, a day too late or a day too early, and saw that price fluctuate up and down. This comes to the time whether the farmers, whose side are they going to be on? On their own or on the buyers or someone else's that want to continue to make profits off of them at their expense, and that's the farmer's expense. Mr. Staley, a lot of people are saying that NFO is going <coughs> to starve America during the holding action. Well, Vince, nothing could be farther from the truth than this. We are offering our products for sale. We are offering our products for sale at a price. No one accuses the local merchant, or in this case, I should probably refer to the supermarket that has a quart of milk sitting there that says 25 cents. Take it or leave it. Nobody accuses them of being in a position of trying to starve anyone. What we're saying is the farmers own these products first, and they are the ones that should first put the price tag on them. We're offering them for sale. And so if the American people get hungry, 
If the food supply is not available, it's not because the farmers are not willing to sell. It's simply because the buyers want to continue to make a profit off of the farmers and keep them selling as an individual rather than to pay them a fair price for their products. It's not the farmers then that are trying to starve anyone. It will be the responsibility of the buyers refusing to pay the farmers a fair price. In other words, pay their price tag. Uh, putting yourself in the place of a consumer, if you were a consumer, would you uh, maybe go out and buy a good supply of food right now? Well, Vince, I think that they should remember that with a 10-day supply of liquids and solids, that with a six or seven day meat supply and storage, that if the buyers are going to continue to hold uh, to their position, that they're not going to let farmers price their products, and that if at this position the farmers decide to really keep their production on the farm, it could become a very serious matter. And I suppose being realistic, uh, that I would probably lay in a pretty fair supply to at least not be caught short. All righty. Well, could you tell us uh, what you <coughs> effect you think a successful NFO would have on this whole United States of ours? There's no question about it. It'd be a tremendous boost to the economics of this nation. The rural businessmen would, of course, find the farmers spending the profits that they make from their industry out in rural America. Agriculture is the greatest pent-up power, uh, purchasing power, that still rests out here that is not being tapped because many farmers, in fact, almost all of them buy new tractors, new automobiles, paint for their buildings, and many, many items. And agriculture is the biggest single purchasing industry in America. And with a fair price for their products, it would have a tremendous boost for the entire nation's, or nation's entire economy. On the other hand, what kind of an outlook do you see for agriculture without FO? Vince, farmers are making a very serious decision. They're making a decision whether they want more of what they've had. They are making a decision individually a decision whether they are going to go to the marketplace and sell as individuals or whether they're going to start pricing their products. Every effort, of course, is being and will be made by those opposing our efforts to convince farmers they should sell. But I want to say to farmers this. You make the decision whether you're going to join NFO and go with the farmers that are really waging the battle. The only hope, Vince, for American agriculture to get a fair price for their products. They can't do it individually. What else is there really to offer them the chance? The prices have been going down for some 12 years. Sure, occasional up in price, and of course before a holding action we always get a boost in price as everybody begins, yeah. gets jittery. Many people don't want to give us credit for it, but look at the facts of the past. It's always happened. It simply means that the farmers are going to determine whether they want more punishment at the marketplace, whether they want to continue to follow the advice of those that have gotten them in the position they're in today, or whether they want to start selling their production together. There's really no middle ground in a holding action. Farmers may think that there, there is. They're either going to say, all right, we want more of what we've had. We want more punishment at the marketplace or they're going to say we're going to join with NFO, the members that make it up, and we're going to keep our production here, we're going to set up a marketing structure whereby we can price our products. This is a decision every farmer is making. Sure, the buyers will try to make things look as though everything is normal. This is their only weapon. The only thing they can do is to convince farmers that it's no use. But if the farmers remember they own the production first, they have it, if they keep it on the farm, they're going to get the price for it. The farmers are making the decision. How much more punishment do they want at the marketplace? Do they want to price their products now, or do they want to look to the future with more and more of what they've had, following the advice of those that got them in the position they're in? The members of the NFO who brought you this program are urging all other farmers to join with them in helping to protect our own farming business.